uh, videos that we looked at together about people talking about twin flames yeah and uh soul work and stuff like that and it's you know it's it's great that people are talking about like mm-hmm. metaphysical concepts inside and alongside relationships yeah except there's so much confusion and there's so much uh idealized romanticized um illusion around the whole yeah. concept of twin really, flames yeah. mm-hmm. uh i mean this this one reel that we watched they actually talked about how oh well your twin flame shows up in your very last embodiment and like everything inside me just like screeched a hole i went what yeah it's like no that's not yeah. how it, that's not how that it works that's i know right yeah, well it's it's, it's, a, it's a, there's some subtleties in the new age or in our spiritual community around relationships and romanticizing spiritual relationships when in reality spiritual relationships i mean every relationship every, is yeah. spiritual yes there there's there's no qualifier for you know here's the ideal this is what it's going to look like it's like no mm-hmm. what you have come in with at a soul level is what you're going to get and manifest if you do your work right and yeah. you can have you can have a, a dozen soulmates in a lifetime because a soulmate is someone who actually helps you do your soul work and helps mm-hmm. facilitate your growth spiritually, emotionally, and mentally, and energetically uh, while they're in your life, as yeah. they're in your life, right? Well, and we what we were discussing too is what, like with our relationship, like he's just moving some things, <laughs> so he doesn't knock them over um well we are talking about with ourselves because there's like we you and i have very different personalities we may enjoy the same things we have a very similar sense of humor yep. there's yep. certain you know entertainment things that we enjoy together mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but we're very different in the way that we express ourselves in the outer world yep. and it's very interesting because a lot of times in relationships people adopt what the other person does or how they do it or they think that you have habits. a really good relationship you have to act the same or people end up acting the same yeah. but you and i are very much individuals yep and yep. we've always strived to be that we way we even because... disagree about things and, and then we'll, we'll talk about well, yeah. it yeah but we won't get into an argument even if we disagree about stuff yeah. we'll find the middle ground we'll find that mm-hmm. bridge between concepts that'll actually a allow us to understand each other and b communicate yeah and c support each other regardless if yeah. you know how we disagree with the whatever yeah going on. because especially on social media which you know everybody is <laughs> thinks like sees a little five minute snippet of your life or five minutes whatever you feel like sharing and then makes a judgment about what your life is like based on that oh yeah that brief especially if you haven't talked to a person in a while and all of a sudden they and it's it's always interesting to me because people will often, you know, because you, you're very direct when you communicate with people. Yeah. And I've always known you to be that way. Yeah. Other people haven't because I know there was, you know, with you and I talked about it, how there's a time in your life where, because you write poetry too. Yeah. So he's a poet and yeah. it's beautiful poetry that he writes, but he doesn't always speak that way. And you're very direct. Because of your background in policy, policy uh, analyzing, yeah, 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 you yeah. know, yeah. government policy and all these things. So you have a very different background than I do, especially when it comes to politics. Like I've learned a I'm, lot. I'm a, I'm a professional about, trained communicator. Yeah, exactly. And, and one of the things, especially like dealing with government, you can't be vague. You can't yeah. misstep. You can't miss. I love, I love the prose. I love poetry. Um Mm-hmm. haiku used to be a, like a real big thing for me so which also taught me how to cut down on irrelevant words yeah yeah right. and 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 yeah like sometimes yeah. like i mean the last few times i did open mm-hmm. mic and it was years ago i would actually i'd, I'd stun the whole audience because of how direct i was mm-hmm. what you were sharing and what i was sharing and how it you know so i i've had to learn to uh not curtail or restrain my directness but to understand how people will not know what to do with it not understand how to process it because they're not used to having direct communication yeah and it was a process for me to become direct and i learned 
how to do that better with you because you were very direct with me and yeah that kind of bit sometimes because you're you're not expecting it and a lot of times when because a lot of people take directness as being aggressive but it isn't aggressive it's just when you state something but when you're used to being in relationships where people are aggressive or they're passive aggressive yeah. your 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 energy's on the lookout for that all the time exactly and so you take it that way and it takes a while to retrain yourself to say oh this is just someone being direct and i can be direct right back and they're not going to take offense to it yeah. because a lot of people take offense their egos take offense to direct communication because sure. you feel like oh like you're, being attacked. Else, you're being attacked but it is there is because there's a very different energy behind being that's attacked true. That's true. and being direct that's true. but if you have unhealed ego wounds yep. you can feel attacked yep. when someone is just direct yep. with you exactly 